Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 410. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about outdoors learning and how that can add a new layer to your outdoor adventures. So I spent a lot of time talking about running, uh, trail running, and hiking, and walking, long-distance trails, and training, and travel, and all that stuff is really great. But I've noticed that the courses and workshops that I've taken in the last couple of years have really added a new layer of knowledge, of experience, of interaction with nature and with the trails. And they've really added to my experience and they've really made my experiences much richer. I've talked about this a little bit last year when I did the Ridgeway. It was right after I'd done my wildlife tracking and identification course. And I really started noticing things along the trail that I hadn't really paid attention to before. Things like kill sites, you know, a dead bird, what might have killed that? Different plants, different animal tracks, scat, all kinds of things that I didn't really pay much attention to before. And that really added a new layer of experience to the trail because, you know, it wasn't just me sharing the trail with other people. It was me sharing the trail with these other animals and birds. So it definitely added to the experience. And as I record this today, I just got back day and a half ago, from five days in the woods. I was on a three-day longbow making workshop, which was absolutely fantastic, followed by a two-day bird song course. And that was kind of an extra that we got because the wildlife tracking and identification course last year was meant to start in April in the spring, and we would have started with bird song when the birds are really out in full song. But because of COVID, it got pushed back in the year and the birds were no longer singing, at least not as much as they are now. So we had a two-day intensive birdsong course at the kind of central campsite at Woodcraft School in the woods around there. And then we went out to a heathland and heard different birds. So that was also really interesting because we heard different birds in different locations. And then we went on the same property in the woods, but we went to a lake, a little lake, a pond and saw water birds there and listened to the different birds that were in the trees around that area. So it was really interesting to not only start to recognize different types of bird song, and that was really challenging for me because I'm not an auditory learner and I'm not a very musical person. So it was really hard to kind of cement that in my head, but I definitely learned a few bird song calls that I will recognize now. Just yesterday when I was out in the woods and I was running, I was paying attention to the bird song in a different way. It wasn't just this kind of symphony of birds. I could pick out the different types of birds that were singing. Much like in a classical symphony, you can pick out the different musical instruments in the orchestra. So I really liked that bird song is no longer just this mesh of songs and notes and things. I can start to pick out some of the different birds, much like I can pick out different plants that are growing alongside the trail. And it's not just this like strip of green stuff, both sides of the trail. And that's also been really, really important for me because I love plants. I've always loved plants, but I didn't necessarily know all the stuff that was growing out there. And it just oftentimes looked like kind of two ribbons of green alongside this brown trail. And when I took my plant identification course two years ago uh, in 2019, that was when I started picking apart the different types of plants that were next to the trail. That was huge for me. It was just really, really lovely to know the different types of plants. 
And as I record this, I'm about to go back later today into the woods for a second weekend of my ethnobotany course. And by the time you listen to this, I will be back from that. But I've just been reflecting on all these courses and all the knowledge I've gained and at the Woodcraft School and elsewhere and how they've added a really important layer of knowledge to my outdoor adventures. So in this episode, I hope to encourage you to get outdoors and learn something new. So I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of outdoor learning how learning outdoors and country skills can really add a new layer to your adventures and make them richer, why this type of outdoors learning can help you relate differently to nature, talk about different types of skills and knowledge that you can acquire in the outdoors, and I give you a whole list of ideas and inspiration for your next learning adventures. So let's get going. So as I said, I just came back from bow making, from the bird days, and I'm getting ready to go into ethnobotany. So that's where I am right now, but I've taken a lot of other courses in the past that have also really added this layer to my outdoor adventures. So I've taken a wild camping course, and that was one of the first things that I did. I really wanted to get into camping, but I didn't know how, I didn't know what gear I needed, I didn't know what mistakes not to make, and I just got online and I googled wild camping course. And I found this guy that was doing wild camping courses and I signed up for it. And we went to the Black Mountains in South Wales and he had all the gear. All I had to bring was just clothes and a sleeping bag. And he brought backpack and tent and a sleeping mat and cooking stove and that kind of thing. And that was really, really great experience. So I will link to that course in the show notes, but I'm not sure if he does it anymore. Someone who does wild camping courses is Mark Reed. And I've done a lot of navigation courses with him. And he does at least, I think, three or four wild camping courses every year in the north, up in North Yorkshire. So I will link to him in the show notes. I really recommend something like this. If you want to get out to sleep in the outdoors, but you've never done it, or you've never done it on your own, or you're afraid to do it, or you don't want to make mistakes, do something like this where you're supported and the people will teach you about what skills you need and what you need to know and what kit you need. So wild camping, very exciting. Foraging days, I did a meetup group a couple of years ago and went on this foraging day. It wasn't even a full day, it was like a half day. But if you search for foraging courses, you can find all kinds of courses on foraging. And that's great because when you go into the woods, you see all these green things and you learn which ones you can eat and which ones you cannot eat, and which ones that you can't eat might be confused with ones that you can eat. So that's a really good thing to learn. And it really adds a different layer to my adventures. A couple of weeks ago when I went to Savernick Forest to take photographs of the trees from my book, the beech leaves were just coming out and they were really fresh and young, and you can eat young beech leaves, and they're really delicious and lovely. So I was just kind of walking along plucking beech leaves <laughs> and eating them as I went. And I went on a run the other day with my husband and I plucked a couple of beech leaves and I gave him one to try. I don't think he liked it very much. He chewed it and he spit it out. But it adds a different layer to your experience because as you're running or walking this trail, you can snack on things along the way. <laughs> it's like um, a salad that follows you along the trail. Forest bathing. I went to a forest bathing meetup group once Never went back, sadly, because it never coincided with my availability. But that forest bathing, again, it was like a half day, was where I got the idea for my book, If Trees Could Talk, because you tree out on that day gave me the idea for the book. And forest bathing is great because it helps you to connect with the woods with all your senses. So hearing, your smelling, your touch, your taste... It really encourages you to slow down and connect with nature. So it's a really good skill to learn, even if you just kind of go to one course and learn some of the basics. One of the things that the trees in my book, If Trees Could Talk, said over and over and over again was, slow down, you move too fast. And I think that slowing down is a great way of connecting with nature. And it's something that I have to remind myself to do. You know, I do it like I will go out and specifically go to connect with trees, to connect with nature, because of course, otherwise I'm either walking or running down the trails. So wildlife tracking and identification, I did that last year at Woodcraft School. It was really, really great. We learned track and sign, so different animal tracks, signs like scat, leftover snacks, 
like seeds and nuts and things that animals would have eaten and left the shells, learning which types of animals leave different types of bite marks on the shells, that kind of thing. Really, really interesting because I learned a lot about what kind of the behavior of animals living in the woods that I walk through. And we also went to different habitats. We went to the coast. We were a lot in the woods, but we saw different things. We went to Heathland and saw reptiles, and it was just really, really, really good. Then towards the end of last year, I did wildlife trailing, which is where you find deer tracks and you follow them, hopefully to the point where you can see the deer. And you can do this for different types of wildlife, depending on what part of the world you live in. And that was really good because it also helped me to learn just how many deer there are in the woods and their lifestyle and how they move and what they do and how to sneak up on them and observe them. That was also at Woodcraft School. Last year, I did the Advanced Bushcraft Award. It was a level three award. It was a super intensive five days. We did spoon carving. We did fire making. We did cordage making. We learned plants. We learned trees. We learn about heat and cold injuries, heat stroke, filtering water, finding water, purifying water, like all the kind of basic skills you need if you're in a survival situation in the outdoors. And cra- if you're, you know, not in a survival situation, and you want to do crafting stuff like spoon carving or cordage. It was a really, really good intro to these skills. And if you just search for bushcraft school in your area, you can find either a comprehensive course like this, or you can find something that's a little more specific if you have a specific skill you want to learn. That was also at Woodcraft School. The very first course I did at Woodcraft School, and I'm linking to Woodcraft School in the notes because this is my favorite school where I love to learn this stuff. And sadly, I'm working my way through all the courses, and I think I've only got one big course left, which I won't be able to sign up for this year because it doesn't fit into my schedule, so it's going to have to be next year. But the first course I took there was Plant Identification and Use, and that was a five-day super intensive course that's all about plant identification and use. So we learned all the different ways to use these plants, whether it's for medicinal purposes or for eating or for creating medicines like tinctures or salves for the skin. And we actually made some things and took some things home. So that was really, really good. And then other types of things that I've done even before this, I did National Navigation Award Scheme. I did the Straight to Silver. So that was really important because that's about navigating, reading a map, knowing how to use a map and compass. I've done the gold course with team walking as well, but I haven't done the gold evaluation. And that's something I want to do either late this year or next year because I feel like I have unfinished business with that, but I also feel like I need to practice the gold techniques. And that's really good because that's learning how to navigate by contours and kind of the different features in the land. And that's a really good skill, not just to learn how to use a map and compass and navigate, but it's also good because it helps you pay attention to the way the land looks around you. And it's really good because these courses I've done in North Yorkshire where there's not as much woodland and so you can really see all the different land formations from a distance and that's, it gives you a totally different perspective. So that's really good. I also did the Lowland Leader Award and that was good. I did it at the time because I was leading walking groups here in the Southeast and I wanted to learn kind of what I needed to know about leading groups. And so that was really useful. There was a lot of navigation in it. But also I learned some really practical things like how to use trails, how not to use trails, that kind of thing. And finally, outdoor first aid, which I've done twice now because you have to update it every three years. And that's been super, super useful to know the skills to take care of myself and others if I get injured or someone else gets injured. So how have these courses helped me to relate to nature differently? How have they helped me to add this extra layer of experience to my outdoor adventures? Forest bathing, as I said, helped me to slow down and just use all my senses. I can recognize plants now. I know some of their uses. I know some of the folklore behind the plants, which I love learning. I know if they're edible or not. Obviously, never eat a plant or forage a plant if you're not 100% sure what it is. I notice animal tracks and signs that I wouldn't have noticed before. I mean, I'm really seeing details on the trails and around the trails that I just wouldn't have paid attention to before these courses. 
They really help me to understand what's going around me in nature. Who's sharing the trails that I use? Because it's not just other people. There's a lot of animals out there. There's a lot of birds out there, even if you're not necessarily seeing them or hearing them. Bushcraft has really helped me to understand the risks of being outdoors and the heat and cold injuries, how to stay safe. It's given me the confidence to be in the outdoors. Bow making corves. We talked a lot about history and how these long bows were used, and it really helped me to understand the history of the land that I live in. It also helped me to just engage with wood in a crafty manner and understand how much work went into making these long bows. I mean, it was full on. It was three days, three and a half. We got there in the evening of the first, before the first day. But there were some days where I started at 7.30 in the morning and I didn't finish until 9.45, quarter, you know, 10 o'clock at night. And all day long, I was working on the bow. And this is one of those courses that's so intensive that they make your dinner for you so that you don't waste time cooking and you can just work as much as you need to. So it was really full on and it was just, it was really great to just get a sense of how people would have made these bows in history because we weren't using power tools. It was all with draw knives and spoke shavers and, and knives, really, different types of blades to make this bow. So it was really good. Lowland Leader, as I said, have, has given me more of an understanding of not just how to lead people on trails, but how to use trails. So one of the interesting things I learned was that trails or footpaths here are technically one meter wide. So when it's muddy and when you walk around the edges of a trail, you're making it wider and you shouldn't do that. So I learned a little bit of the etiquette of using trails and sharing trails with other people, which was really, really useful. Now, if you search online for the benefits of outdoor learning, you mostly get information about children and forest schools and that kind of things. But adults can really benefit from learning about nature. A lot of us are so disconnected from nature. And taking courses like this, in addition to getting outdoors, helps give us a greater respect for the land that we live on. It gives us a greater understanding and perspective of what's going on outside our front door, whether it's in the fields, in the forests, and the coast. And it gives us a greater respect for our natural resources. So I think it's really, really useful, not just for children to learn this stuff, but for adults. And there are so many kinds of outdoor courses. So you can find something to either deepen your knowledge about your favorite topics, plants in my case, or learn something new, like animals in my case. I was just talking about this around the fire the other night with some of the friends from groups that I've taken a couple of courses with, because Woodcraft School, a lot of people come back and do more and more courses. It's not just me that's like a special groupie. People really love this school and they come back and just keep doing courses there. So it's really lovely because I've seen lots of people on two or three different courses. So I was just chatting with a friend and she was saying, we were talking about you know ethnobotany versus wildlife tracking, and she was saying that her thing is animals, and she knows animals, and she has more experience with animals, whereas the plants, it's all new and confusing to her. Or not confusing, but just new information. And for me, it's the exact opposite. I love plants. I've always loved plants. My first job when I was 15 was at a garden center, and I was learning plants and selling plants and helping people find the best plant for their garden. And I've always loved plants. Whereas the animal stuff was really new to me. And I think that was super overwhelming to me because there was so much to learn. Overwhelming, not in a bad way, but I didn't go on to do the assessment, which is separate because I just felt like there was so much information. I felt like I really needed to spend some more time learning. However, a lot of people went straight on to assessment from the four months course that I did and they did really well in their assessment. So it's just me that's a bit insecure about my knowledge of animals. But I do want to do one of the assessments next year. So yeah, you can either find something to deepen your knowledge about something you already know or learn something totally new. One of the things that I really want to do is a wilderness quest where you go out into nature alone, spend a couple of nights in nature with just the bare minimum. Most of the time you're fasting. A lot of times you'll just have water with you and a very simple shelter like a tarp. There are lots of places around the world that do this. That's something that's been on my list for years. You could do woodworking, spoon carving, whittling, making a longbow, that kind of thing. That's a really interesting way of working with natural materials. 
You can learn fire making. That's a really basic part of any bushcraft course, but there are specific courses that teach you how to make fire in different ways. You can do a thing, an escape the woods course, which is kind of like an escape room, but in the outdoors. You can do camp cooking. You can learn how to cook on a fire. You can learn how to make your own herbal remedies. You can learn flint napping. You can learn how to butcher an animal. So in the level four bushcraft course that I want to take, one of the things you learn is how to butcher a deer and skin a deer. But there are also courses where you can learn how to do that with a rabbit and then make a rabbit stew on the fire. So if you're a meat eater, that might be something you want to learn. You can learn how to make cordage and tie knots. You can learn basket making, basket weaving. You can learn country skills, looking online for different types of country skill courses, and you can learn dry stone walling, beekeeping, spinning wool, making bark containers, making rag rug. And all of these things will help you add that extra learning, that extra layer of knowledge, of experience to your outdoor adventures. So think about these topics that I've mentioned to you and see what sounds like fun, what sounds like a challenge, and just go online and search. There's courses like this all over the place. And, you know, most of them are on the weekends because that's when people are available. Sometimes they're available during the week. But there are so many courses. So take a look, see what's available in your area. And as I said, you can either dive deeper into things that you already know, or you can learn something completely new and different and something that's maybe even outside of your comfort zone. So I hope you found this interesting and useful. And I wanted to remind you before I sign off that today, Monday, that this goes live is the last day of my ebook promo that I'm doing with my author friends. So if you head over to hollywharton.com forward slash adventure, today's the last day that you can get these ebooks on adventure and travel for free or at a super great discount. So hollywharton.com forward slash adventure to get some free and cheap ebooks. And that's all for now. Please drop me a line. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 410 for the show notes on this episode. I will have all the links of places to look for courses, places where I've taken courses, and you can find your own. And feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or if you want to get my opinion on some of the courses that I've taken, just feel free to get in touch. And that is all for now. Happy trails to you and have a fantastic week in the outdoors. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.